All right. Finally time. Oh, getting ready took a lot longer than I thought. Guess you just gotta get everything dialed in. And then over the next few days, this shit should all get better. Well, I guess I should kind of explain what I'm even doing. So, I will do so when I get to the trailhead. Well, it is an absolutely stunning morning here in northern Montana. Cannot wait to get on the trail. Man, it's pretty. Some more bumbies. It's okay. All right, it is. What time is it? Um, about 8.02 in the morning. It is Saturday, September 2nd. And today is the first day of my solo adventure uh, through uh, riding the Continental Divide. This is something I've been wanting to do for, for a long time. I've been kind of planning and preparing for this for pretty much a little bit over a year since I finished the Wyoming BDR last summer. I just happened to stumble across uh, an awesome YouTube video from Brady over at Meerkat ADV. So make sure you check out his channel. Um, it was called The Continental Divide the Hard Way. And he spent, it was a great two hour movie and I cannot tell you how many times I've watched it, but he basically put together this really cool Continental Divide track that is avoiding as much tarmac or pavement as possible. So uh, I was instantly hooked and said, I, I really, really wanted to do this. So that's what, what I'm here to do. Uh, my wife and I, we rode uh, from Colorado yesterday up to northern Montana into Big Fork right next to the Flathead Lake. I had a, a budget rental a cargo van that we rented and it, it was a 16 hour ride up. Um, and it was an old Amazon delivery van, so it was beat to crap. But anyways, um, got up 4.30 this morning, probably a little early, I know, but um, you know, first time you get ready to ride with all of your gear, getting everything dialed in, it, it just took a while getting ready. So, um, from Big Fork, um, we're gonna ride up to, towards the Canadian border. Um, so the first stop is gonna be, go grab some gas um, at a tiny little place um, sometime before Eureka. And from there, we're actually gonna follow a short track um, from GPS Kevin's route to, through the forest there, towards Glacier National Park that takes us to the border, uh, the Canadian border on a forest road, basically where uh, Brady, uh, aka Meerkat ADV, um, finished his route. He, start, he did the route south to north, I'm doing it north to south. A um, couple reasons for that. Um, it is September, so um, starting north gives me the advantage that I highest chance that I'm avoiding snow or at least most of it in the cold temperatures up north, especially through Montana and Wyoming. Um, I mean, it can snow at any point late August in these parts. So and, uh, it gives some time for the desert to cool down. We've had record heat this year down in New Mexico along with some wildfires. So I'm gonna combine that and ride down to the Mexican border in New Mexico. Should be roughly around 3,000 miles. Uh, I'm thinking probably 85-90% of that on off-road. Uh, so yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, I'm excited, so can't wait. It is still pretty freaking cold here. This keeps dropping down. We're at 46 now. We started out at 72, no, 52. 
and I, you can feel the humidity in the air and I'm not sure if you can see that but right ahead of us is still the fog is sitting thick in here um, you can definitely feel fall is coming fast in these parts traffic here for fire traffic. I've seen a ton of fire trucks, water trucks. Um, hoping the fires didn't get ignited again last night. Increased. So hopefully the trails are all open. Last I checked they should be but uh, you never really know. So but if they're closed we'll, we'll find an alternative uh, to go along the trail. It's all part of the adventure. But the uh, check gas light came on, so I need to get to that gas station and then try to warm up some. The lowest I've seen was 44. Now it's going to 53, and it uh, feels so much better. Alright, we're at 14 or 14 gas station. So from here, we're gonna jump on the trail. Grave Road. What a name to start the tour with. <laughs> oh god. Alright, so I guess this really is the kind of the start of the tour. Can't wait. It's so beautiful out here. There's just so much wildlife out here. I mean I can see why, but oh I mean, we have a lot of wildlife in Colorado, but Montana is a whole other level. Let's just hope our big fuzzy friends stay uh, a good distance away. I'd love to see some grizzlies, but it's not at my campsite. Or while I'm fixing a flat on the side of the road or something like that. Alright, so plan for today, day one. Uh, first of all was coming up here to the trailhead, which is um, was about an uh, hour and a half drive away from Big Fork, uh, where I spent the night. So got to the gas station, got some gas, and just jumped like a, a mile or so up the road on this section right here, which is part of the uh, GPS Kevin route. We're going to make it to the Canadian border. From there, uh, we're going to follow like dirt. Uh, parallel to Glacier National Park. I'm not actually gonna drive through like going to the Sun Road or anything like that I'm just gonna go through along the way to Glacier and I'm gonna end up at Sealy Lake for the night um, It's kind of hard to say how long this day is gonna be it could be pretty long the whole route that I'm taking from uh, From where I started this morning is 302 miles of that I think we're looking at about 160 in the dirt so I mean it's gonna depend is it all gravel is it actually real Jeep trails I'm not sure we'll find out but that's the plan for today staying at an Airbnb uh, for the first night or two uh, just in case anything uh, needs fixing on the bike all the camera gear that I'm carrying etc it's a lot easier to do when you have some Wi-Fi the first night uh, in a parking lot where you can work on stuff. So until that's dialed in, um, and then we'll off, go camping. made it on dirt and so it begins <laughs> uh.
nice little travel road, beautiful views. What else do you need? Got to get used to driving with a fully loaded bike again. Last time I did that was about a year ago, running the Wyoming BDR, which if you haven't seen my videos on it, you should watch it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, but highly recommend the BDR. It, it was absolutely beautiful, super remote, um, stunning scenery, just... I mean, Wyoming BDR is no joke, like in perfect conditions, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, like like any BDR really, but as soon as you get just some rain or a little bit of moisture Oh man, it will make it extremely difficult Okay, so there's a right hand turn somewhere here. Oh, there we go Nice Oop. All right, a little bit more trail-like. What this bike is built for, so. Man, I'm just getting waves of humidity thrown on my face. Warm humidity, so that's nice, but a little unexpected. It feels like Florida. Oh, absolutely gorgeous out here. What a view! Oh, so glad to get more, a little warmer. Oh, I'm a little warmer. I mean, it's 53, but it's sun. I'll take it. Oh, what an amazing little road! Seriously. Landslide. Tell you what, I'm glad I brought these 90-10 tires. D done a couple of trips on these yet. I mean, these are brand spanking new on there, but the Moto's um, Desert HT. Fantastic tire, honestly. For anything that I found in Colorado, Wyoming, Utah. Nice little campgrounds. Though, I don't know if, I mean, they're a little bit remote up in the highest grizzly concentration in the North Open Door 48. These meadows are awesome. Might see some moose out here. This is a really good area for moose. Ooh, ooh. Pay more attention to the road instead of just looking for moose. You know, that's why I take these videos too. I don't really care about subscribers, views, any of that stuff. I'm not making these YouTube videos, or these videos I should say to, like, I don't know, get some cloud or something. I am making them for myself, uh, friends and family, because my memory is already not the greatest, but 10, 15, 20 years from now, I wanna, I wanna remember these trips. I wanna relive it and I wanna have a record of it. So, um, on top of that, I think my ADHD and tech nerdiness kind of jumps in here and makes me get like a bunch of different cameras, a drone, and kind of geek out to that. Um, so I'm happy to share those videos. I'm glad if somebody likes them. Um, if if you really enjoy them, I mean, let me know in the comments below. But if you don't, I don't really care. <laughs> these these are for me. For those of you who are interested in random uh, 
camera facts of how these things are recorded. Uh, recording on two GoPro 11s, one mini, one full size, um, uh, Insta360 X3, and Skydio 2. Uh, all my cameras have one terabyte SD cards in them. I carry additional terabyte SD cards, which I know is, might seem overkill to some, but uh, trust me, if you're filming four hours a day or so across the different cameras, it adds up quick, especially at 5.3K, 60 FPS, high bit rate. Um, I'm having to carry eight terabytes worth of external SSDs to copy all the files on. Uh, I hope that's enough for the trip, 8 terabytes. <laughs> to keep everything charged to, um, pretty straightforward. So the GoPro and the Insta360 up front, as you can see, uh, plugged into the tower, uh, USB slots. Um, my bag down here has all the drone batteries in it that's being also charged while sitting in there. And my helmet cam is running off a waterproof Goal Zero power bank that lasts all day. So I don't ever have to worry about swapping out batteries because batteries are annoying. Back there, those peaks must be glacier. of what I'm seeing here for the past few miles are just these really fast dirt roads which is nice to mix it up a little bit because I do need to make some distance up today um, 55 miles since the start of the trail plus 80 miles 130 
So I'm a little less than halfway uh, for today and it is 11.11. So still got a ways to go. Uh, we'll see how those roads are. It might be that up there early afternoon or in the dark. Uh, see? But for now, just gonna enjoy this beautiful vista. I mean, look at that view. To the left of us is uh, Glacier National Park. I do wish I would have been able to take some more time just to explore the park a little bit too, but can't complain about two weeks off. <laughs> We're heading to Glacier now. <laughs> this, this place is crazy. It's just views everywhere. But you gotta watch out for the road in the potholes. <laughs> Traffic signal in the middle of nowhere. How'd you like that? And we made it to Glacier. Hey there. Hi. Uh, let me get my pass out. I don't have any reservations. I'm just trying to get to Kalispell from here, so I'm not doing the Sun Road. Does that matter? Uh, I mean, it kind of does, but you're welcome to go out of the West Glacier exit. Okay, great. Uh, sorry, it's okay. everything. You're good. A little more difficult on a bike. <laughs> great. Yeah, so at this four way stop coming up, you take a right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. here is exactly why well, I'm not going into Glacier. Well, I mean, I am technically in Glacier, but I'm not driving <laughs> through going to Sun Road or anything like that. I would be stuck in stop and go for hours, which is not that appealing to me. We have other things to see. What a view, that river. That is gorgeous. Man, you could not wish for a better lunch spot than this. Look at that. Falls. Nice 
river. Oh, nice and blue. It's amazing. And Leon Dirt again. Oh. Almost always a relief when you finally get off the street and get to ride some gravel, rock, sand, whatever. We're right running parallel to Swan Lake. Uh, my uh, fuel light came on so I switched on the auxiliary tank. So we should have more than enough fuel to get wherever I'm going. Climbing a little bit, 4,800 feet, we started around 28. Temperature dropped a little bit down to 68, which is amazing. Fun little fast dirt roads here. Fresh air. Oh, beautiful. So we have a passenger, old dragonfly. All right, got one little guy. <laughs> Look at that. I guess he is really wanting to catch a ride, huh? So here, oops, and there you go. <laughs> There's a lot of trees down through this trail. I don't know, I kind of want this small one to be down across the trail. I need to bring out the saw, show off my sweet saw skills. <sighs> Beep. My whole back shifted and I got some major damage here. There's my bottle. Oh shit, I wonder what I lost. How did that even happen? Don't understand. All right. Time to do a little trail side repair. All right, first trail damage here, middle freaking nowhere, Montana. And wow, this beautiful, we have a slight problem. All right, you can see here, remnants of some gear that's busted. My bottle, one of my Moscow bags. Um, I don't think I lost anything, but I'm not 100% sure. The whole rig shifted um, and was rubbing on the tire and rubbed it open. And I think it's because the bag wasn't too tight. Also, that bag is super heavy because it has all my tools in it. Um, so I will repack it for now and uh, go on with it and then look at it later tonight. The broken bag and all the gear in it for now under my beaver tail. I think I'm going to have to just look at the muscle harness and see how I can fasten it better. Problem is it just moves around too much. I haven't had that issue when I took it out in the past, but I guess first time for everything, right? <laughs> At least I'm nice and sweaty and hot now. All right, let's keep going. A little waterfall. I think again, just a little bit paranoid. <laughs> um, every time I hear like a little noise or something, I'm thinking that the bag shifted again and it's rubbing. I've checked it a couple of times, and uh, while it's not great, 
it seems to be seems to be okay for right now the bag itself that ripped that's replaceable i'm not worried about that i actually brought an extra one of those uh that's currently mounted that just holds my clothes so i can consolidate some luggage and reuse that bag um and i don't think um that i really lost anything other than that uh water bottle that uh, got obliterated but uh if i did <laughs> it's gonna show up when i go camping one of these days right so quick update what i did so instead of this strap here going down here to heel guard I attached it to the frame, so it should hold it a little bit further up and straight. Um, so when I look at it now, seems more even. Um, at least more so than it was before. All right, S some more trail left to go, so let's finish it out. Almost went the wrong way there. All right, coming up to the next off-road section, but uh, it is where there was an active wildfire not long ago. It might still be a little active, so I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get in there or not. It's the cold fire. Turn-off should be right here. Road is closed because of the fire. <sighs> Alright, so... Probably looks pretty nice from the map, so... I uh, wish I could ride it, but... So it looks like on the map I might be able to... Um, just get across the fire and still get some of the trail at the end of this lake. So, see if that works. Beautiful lake. So, let's see if we can get through here. Fire activity ahead. Yeah, because, uh, because which road is closed? Uh, okay. I guess this one is still closed. Huh? Fire traffic road? I really don't know. Yeah, it says road closed, so uh, road is closed. Oh well. All right, we are in Sealy Lake. Oh, this is gonna be our destination for today. So, grabbing some gas, probably some water. Um, well, I can grab water in the morning. Um, and. Head to the Airbnb, let the bike cool down, uh, and then take a look at the coolant levels and see if we can fix the bags, see what's going on there. We have found some gas.
Here we are at the base camp lodge. So, just to do kind of a little bit of a recap over the past few days since uh, I really haven't had a chance to. Well, or I just didn't make those videos because I, I was pretty beat after <laughs> after the long day. So, first day from uh, where we, where I stayed in Big Fork, um, going out towards the Canadian border. Uh, little cold, nothing major. It was just like a hundred miles of road riding, but um, I was kind of disappointed that I didn't make it to the Canadian border uh, with the road being closed like a mile or two before the border crossing on the dirt side. Uh, my only other option would have been to go back in where I came from and then ride the road up, but it wasn't just just wasn't worth it. It was a 300 mile plus day, so I wasn't gonna do that. <clears throat> plus, I was driving 16, 17 hours a day before just to get to Montana, which <laughs> made me pretty tired. And I got up 4:30 to uh, get everything ready. But uh, other than that, uh, once I hit the trail, I mean, all the worries kind of went away. It was kind of in in my mode. Everything was nice. Great time um, going through parts of Glacier was pretty cool. Uh, so after that long road section, majority of that day was riding road, but I mean, it was still pretty. It was, it was just small, small houses and ranches along the way. And then eventually climbing into the dirt. Um, weather kind of closed in a little bit. It wasn't raining or anything. It just got darker. Um, and then when I finally found that issue with my back that ripped, it was rubbing against a tire. I mean, I think I took that one in stride. Uh, something is always going to happen when you get your gear set up for the first time. Luckily, I had a second bag with me, the same exact one. Um, so I was able to rearrange things. Uh, there's still a few straps that are ripped that I haven't fixed yet, but um, the way everything holds together should be totally fine. Uh, then unfortunately, a few of the nicer dirt sections I was really looking forward to in day one were close due to forest fires right around Sealy Lake. Uh, but, I mean, it happens. Uh, then staying the night at Sealy Lake, that was a good place. Um, the base camp lodge uh, ran into a couple of other riders on 701 from the UK that were doing the same thing uh, that I'm doing, but they're taking six weeks instead of two weeks. Which, just looking back over the past few days, I probably should have taken more time, but uh, it, it's challenging. Uh, unless you're retired or like work for yourself or something like that, just taking off more than two weeks. Two weeks alone is already a big ask. 